Gauteng. Acting Health MEC Jacob Mamabolo joins us now to discuss this. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. So less than a week into lockdown level two and the unbanning of alcohol sales, what impact have we seen on our hospital trauma wards? Firstly, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and good afternoon and happy Women's Month. Let me just say that um, the current um, um, move from alert level three to two and allowing of more economic activity will definitely mean uh, in our province, given the unique and distinct nature of our province being the main uh, economic hub for the country, more economic activities bring pressure. The point you raised about um, and, uh, lifting the ban on the sale of alcohol, definitely those issues will, be, will bring much pressure to bear on the resources and facilities in the institution. We are currently uh, coping with a situation we have not seen a dramatic spike in the numbers uh, of admissions as per the new move. But certainly, as we have said even just yesterday, that uh, the new developments, given the new unique conditions mm. of our province, uh, it definitely will mean we have to be, we have to up our game. We have to make sure that we remain vigilant so that we can deal with the pressures that will be brought to bear on the entire health care system. Hmm. So as the number of new COVID-19 cases and subsequent hospitalizations decrease, uh, we may have more capacity in hospitals to deal specifically with alcohol-related trauma cases, but our hospitals also need to stand ready for that possible second wave of COVID-19 that you're talking about that could result as, uh, from the opening of economic sectors. So what is the state of readiness in our province? Do you know what the capacity is in our uh, provincial hospitals uh, for specifically uh, alcohol-related trauma and non-COVID-19 cases? So let me break it. Let me just give you what uh, state of readiness will mean. It will mean um, uh, increasing capacity with respect to infrastructure, and that is a direct bearing on the number of beds. So to that extent, I can say precisely the point you have made, the decrease in the number of admissions, freeing beds, uh, in the hospitals that were initially meant for normal activity, uh, it means those beds are now available to be able to accommodate uh, other patients that would need to be admitted, including those that goes into trauma. Secondly, we uh, have increased our capacity, we are working on it, which is the human resources that are required uh, to be able to deal with uh, the challenges. So as the numbers decline, including the number of workers who get infected by COVID-19, it means uh, we have got more additional capacity uh, to be able to cope with any spike that might come. And thirdly, we, there's an issue of medical equipment and medical devices that mm -hmm. are necessary to make sure that uh, with human resources and those, the bed is effectively functional in the sense that it has everything that it requires. The other issue that's very much important for us, uh, it's also just, um, um, you know, the, the softer issues around uh, continuing to boost the morale, the spirit and the strength and the determination of our officials to continue to do the good work. So to that extent, I can say to you, we are ready. And we are also given the projections that have been made by our statistical modeling and forecasting, that has given us also a bit of a breather because initially it was said the peak will come in now end of August and mm. early September. We know now we have, um, it has moved to end of November and early week of uh, December. So that also helped us to do two things. One of them is cost effectiveness. That means redeploying our resources in such a way that we will be able to get better value for money even moving forward and leave better legacy in terms of resources in the facilities. Hmm. Secondly, it means operational efficiency 
which also means doctors, nurses, and specialists, and all health professionals, when they need good, well-maintained infrastructure, people and all that, they should be able to get them. So the point I'm making is the two risks you are referring to, uh, lifting the ban on uh, alcohol, and secondly, the possible spike, an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, both are the two sources of risk mm. for us in the province. And uh, I can assure you that uh, we are doing very well uh, in that area. I just finished a meeting with the top management of the department dealing with PPE, uh, occupational health and safety. We had a very good meeting. We're strengthening and upping our game or upscaling our level of activity to make sure that even on occupational health and safety, personal protective equipment, we are ready to be able to confront the, the possible spike in admissions as a result of a uh, lift on alcohol ban. And secondly, downgrading economic, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, alert levels, upscaling economic activity. Those two sources of pressure for our province, mm -hmm. we are certainly ready. MEC, it's been three weeks since you uh, replaced uh, the former MEC Bandile Masuku as acting MEC for Health in Gauteng, and that was due to investigations into Mr. Masuku's alleged involvement in uh, PPE procurement irregularities. So PPE is a very contentious issue in our province, like it is in many others. Uh, what is the situation at the moment? Do we have sufficient stocks? Yeah, if you don't mind, I would just like to correct that uh, Dr. Pandile Masuku is not the former MEC. He is still the MEC, he's just he is on, um, on, on, on special leave. Mm. So let me clarify that I'm the MEC of uh, Public Transport and Roads Infrastructure Acting in Health. Uh, but what has happened since I was uh, given the privilege to lead this very important department for this short period? I visited 26 facilities, including the two leading storage warehouses for PPE. And what I can assure you is we have seen what the weaknesses are. One of it, we have corrected it today. Facilities are holding once a week meetings, many of them, if not all of them, except one or two. That is not enough because PPE it's a daily consumable. It's something that staff and workers use every second, every minute, including when they change in a day. Mm. So one of the decisions we have just made indicating the importance of PPE, because remember, if we don't focus on PPE, it has the potential to increase the rate of infections amongst workers and decapacitate the hospital institutional capacity in human resources to, to mm. respond. So. This issue of PPE, we have just taken an important decision. Every hospital, and I've set up our uh, labor relations to enforce compliance, every institution is going to hold a meeting one hour every day to do daily stock checks, to check uh, availability, distribution, including with trade unions. So the decision to make sure that we meet daily and not once in a week, to deal with PPE daily supply to workers, that is a very important decision because it means we will focus our eyes, we will get them fixed right on PPE because if we don't do that, we run the danger of high rates of infections among workers and therefore uh, weakening our human resource capacity to protect the, the public, the patients, mm. and the residents of our province. So I'm trying to say to you, the visit I did to hospitals, there are issues of quality. Yes. We are going to be making an announcement very soon about how we are going to clear these two uh, facilities that are full of massive quantities, some of them poor quality. So mm. we will be announcing very soon how we are going to audit and clean all the things that definitely don't meet quality assurance and we are able to provide workers with what works and what is good so that we don't have workers complying mm. but the quality is poor and it exposes them so but you're going to see us making announcement on cracking poor quality in the current facilities and making safeguards to protect new stock at that well, thank you very much for those insights and that update that was jacob mamabola the acting gauteng health mec